someone left a note on my door that said Jews created COVID-19 to subvert the white race. This note was covered with stickers and various Jewish caricatures. A bag of rat poison was tapped to the bag. We were doing a work project where you had to write stuff onto a piece of paper when it gets randomly passed back out. The guy who sat next to me showed me that his new piece of paper had swastikas and gas the juice and burn those oven oh my god burn those oven dodging <laughs> written all over it. One day during class we were discussing the oppression of minorities. Every time I try to speak about the oppression of Jews, I will be immediately shut out, told. Jews are white, girl told me, that Jews own everything and are always rich, so we were never oppressed. That day I stopped feeling safe in my own school. After returning $5 to a classmate that I had borrowed from that, that, the day before, he told me he was surprised I paid him back. He said, I thought Jews didn't repay people after borrowing money. It's like a joke to them. At freshman orientation, a fellow student was surprised to learn that I was Jewish because I seemed to be normal. A group of students said to have a kick a Jew day, where if they knew you were Jewish, they would kick you. It was mostly directed to their friends, but I remember feeling unsafe around my peers. I went to high school with non-Jews beginning and we used to play soccer together. And all of a sudden, we played the Jewish school against the other school. They started to find a way how to kick us, how to make us fall, and, and at the end, they used to come with even sticks to fight against us. I went through this, and this is so true. It was even worth, it started Just already. Just because you were Jewish. I remember it like today. One Friday night, I was explaining to someone what is sh Shabbat. She replied, gross. A few minutes later, I tried to pet her dog and she yelled at me to get away from him because he does not like people like me. As a Holocaust survivor, if someone would say to me, I think like that, say to him, I don't give a damn what you say. The fact is that I survived and I'm here. I wore starved David Nicholas to school. A classmate who I barely knew saw it and asked if I was Jewish. I said yes, and he called me a terrorist. And he called me a terrorist. He told me that all Jews and everyone in Israel are terrorists. The kid was never punished. A lot of people can say anti-Semitic things and just like get by with it because people don't care about it and like they get ignored. If he would know what I know, even 10% of it, he would have punished him. Several students in my grade noticed I started wearing a Star of David necklace and one came to me and said, I wish Hitler would still be alive so he could kill you. This thing happened nearly every day for two years. In Lithuania, where I was born, anti-Semitism for us meant that sometimes breaking windows, insults, incitements, beating up Jewish boys, go to Palestine, uh, you fat and Jewish. I was walking with my family to our synagogue on Yom Kippur, and a car pulled up next to us, and a man began yelling the word Jews out the window and shook his face at us as he drove away. I don't see why people have the urge to do that. One day my history teacher had us watch conspiracy videos. Uh, somehow the Holocaust came up and my teacher com commented, Joseph Mengele contributed a lot to science. To science, how to kill innocent people, men, children, old and young, with gas, with crematoria. This is a science what he did, yes? And my mother told him, Sir, Sir, for Mengele, please let me live, let me live with my children. And Mengele in a second, right, left. So he said, 
my mother with the baby to one side and my sister's assembly with her and me to the other side. I was trying to convince my friend group to go to a Halloween party with a bunch of people from my middle school, a Jewish private school. And one girl said, that's, so, that's too many Jews for me. Okay. Students from a few different fraternities moved into a new fraternity house they openly um, and frequently called the oven. Poking fun of the Holocaust, it became a widely known throughout the campus and it reached the administration yet no action was taken. In my family, I had my grandmother that her parents, one of them survived the Holocaust, one of them didn't. When, even when she hears just things or jokes about the Holocaust, it's hard for her and she, and like, she, she will start crying or she, she just freeze. People here just making fun of it and making jokes about such horrible things that Jews are getting burnt and gassed to death and people are making jokes about it. It's like it's horrible to hear. Last year people would dress up as Orthodox Jews and pass out threatening flyers about the Jews being behind the 9-11 and being the devils. They would chase students in the street, waving these flyers in our faces. It's very easy to blame um, uh, other people uh, about the problems in the world. And uh, to blame the Jews is just crazy. Throughout my childhood, I was proud and open about being Jewish. However, I stopped there in my freshman year of high school. A classmate showed me Skype messages he received from another one of her classmates. The Jewish, right? I want to stop here with lead. It's what the Jews deserve. In high school, <coughs> there was a boy sitting next to me in the math class. He sympathized with the Nazis and identified with them. He would treat Jews like pigs on a regular basis. He would tell me, knowing that I am a Jew, you are pigs and the world needs to be clean of pigs. I would, uh, I would plainly said, Oy va avoy to the world if we will have people like this boy growing up. I was called a pig, I told you before. Jews are spreading cancer. The Jews are spreading malaria. I say to this boy, if he makes jokes, I will maybe tell him a trip, come with me to Birkenau. Where's my mother? Where are my siblings? What is a sin? And you are telling me all these funny jokes? Come with me to, Bir to Birkenau. Someone who I lived with consistently made Holocaust jokes and when I told her that they are not funny, she told me I was being too sensitive, adding she wished it was legal to finish what the Nazis started. You can tell the one who thinks that way you will never, never, never succeed. You might hit us, you might punish us, you will never succeed. Once I was walking the street in England, um, me and my dad and my family, my dad was wearing a keep on his head. He's very proud of being a religious Jew. And we see his three drunk, this drunk family, right? And he starts saying, go back to wherever you belong. The Holocaust is the greatest thing to ever happen to us. I still remember this to this day. It's scary. It's scary. I grew up in Australia and I don't, I don't know any people outside of the Jewish community that would know what the Holocaust was if I mentioned it to them. We have to tell, we have to tell, we have to tell. Anti-Semitism goes on thousands of years. During Israel Apartheid Week, an anti-Israel student gave a Nazi salute and used his finger as a moustache to imitate Hitler in front of me and other Jewish students. To those who encounter anti-Semitism every day, I have a message for you. Don't give up. I have the hope and I'm proud of it to feel that way. These young people like you and others. Humans possibly can do such horrible things to people that like that didn't do anything just because how we, the way you were born like after learning about the holocaust they still add on to it and like it's horrible and it's inhuman it makes me feel just like really sad and sort of like lose hope in humanity sort of when i hear stuff like this but then you see how israel grew after 
and you see people like you now living in Israel. We moved on and we did better and we grew and that's also really nice to like it sort of restores the hope. Keep going, keep doing what you what you know to do the best. Just keep your head up, your Tina. We have a homeland today, we have a Jewish state. We are not defenseless as we used to be. We have our pride. Bimkom Sidat Hinan, you should all have Ahavat Hinan. I survived periods of anti-Semitism as a little boy and as a grown-up and as a Nazi camp survivor. I created a family. I have six grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. I'm Israel Chai. You cannot build a future without knowing the past. God forbid, we don't forget us, we will not forget us. And this is up to you, the young generation, not to let this to happen again. People must hear this story. Anti-Semitism isn't just a Jewish problem. It is a world problem. To eradicate it, we must stand against hate. Stand up to hatred. 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 Stand up to hatred.